Hey, what's going on, everybody? We got Rod McKenzie here. Covers Georgia Tech for GoJackets.com and the 24-7 Sports Network. We're going to talk about this game. Rod, how are you? I'm doing great. I hope you are, too. Yeah, doing okay. Both both programs, uh, let's get right into it. it. It's an interesting game with where these programs are both at. Different momentums and things. Miami 4-5, and 2-3 and three in the ACC. Georgia Tech 4-5, and 3-3 three and three in the ACC. Well, let's talk about uh, what's happened since the coaching change with Georgia Tech. We'll get into some, some position groups, but... One and three, they start one and three, three and two cents, get that that win against uh, Virginia Tech, um, 28-27 last week, you know, down in that game. So you got to feel good um, for for them going to this one. But essentially what's changed, Rod, um, since the coaching change? Well, Brent Key, uh, is, as a former Georgia Tech player, uh, has, has he's gone old school on him. And he's making, you know, he's holding everyone accountable. Practices, he's changed that. Uh, Jeff Collins had the above the line where you didn't know who the starters were, but he, he wanted to make the players feel good by playing a lot of players. Uh, Keep changed all that, went to the, the two deep, uh, and it especially showed up on defense where instead of shuffling guys in and out all the time, uh, basically the starters are playing most of the game. And, and the one exception would be what you see on most teams, and that's on the defensive line where, you know, a lot of these big guys get tired every now and then during the game. So you, you want to have some sort of rotation, whether it be four guys, five guys, whatever it happens to be. So uh, that's that's the major change. And, and he, he has the guys, you know, uh, dealing with adversity, playing the full 60 minutes, and, and that's sort of that theme really – you know, he, he's really digging into the mental side of the game, and that's really paid off, you know, since he's taken over. Yeah, Rod, that's fascinating to hear, and I want to hear get more of your take on it because Miami's certainly dealing with their own cultural issues right now. New head coach, it's obviously fallen flat for them coming off the 45-3 loss. A lot of disappointing results this season for Miami. And they're talking about that changes within the program and all these things, buy-in and stuff like that. Rod, are there other things that, that when coach key kind of took over that maybe you're seeing with the buy-in, like you said, they, they got off to that good start. Um, with the wins, it happened during the season. So are there other type of things that you, that you know about that you've heard about that you think is going on with that program in terms of, you know, a buy-in or, or culture type changes that, that are making a difference? Well, naturally when, when he became the head coach, your minus your offensive line coach, and then the uh, the running back coach moved on. So he had to he had to adjust his his coaching staff first of all, and he uh, he promoted the GA to the offensive line coach, and he's someone that you know had worked with the offensive line every day. The players knew him, trusted him, and naturally he carried out what what Key like likes to do with the offensive line because. You know, and now, now that he's head coach, he can't stay with the offensive line all practice. You know, he has to make his way around the practice. So uh, that 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 was pretty big. And I, you know, uh, he let Andrew Thacker run the defense. He he showed trust in him. And it's funny how last year everyone blamed Andrew Thacker for the terrible defense, and now that Andrew Thacker has taken over the defense by himself. You know, they've, they've played so much better. They're in the top 10 in the country in takeaways. So they, had, they had four alone against uh, Virginia Tech, three fumble recoveries and an and a, uh, interception. And that, they, those were key plays in the game in that comeback. And, uh, you know, it's funny how, how perception, how fast perception can change about a coach, you know, based on what happens in the games. Yeah. But positively and negatively, again, exactly. Miami, a, a lot of positivity going into the season. And again, it's just falling flat. It's it's interesting. You talk about the head coach around the offensive line at Miami. Mario Cristobal is the head coach, but he has that offensive line background. And when we were able to be at practices in the fall, he's almost always around the offensive line. So I find that interesting that, you know, head coaches, you know, in different roles, you know, certainly uh, with, with Coach Key took over there. Quarterback at, at, at Georgia Tech. Uh, let's talk about, I, I guess, just any update with Jeff Sims, but also, uh, yeah, just start with that and, and with Jeff there. Yeah, and the interesting thing, there's it seems like there's a lot of similarities with what's been going on lately with Miami also. You know, injuries playing a role, allowing maybe some younger quarterbacks to 
to get out there and show what they can do. And uh, when uh, Jeff was hurt way back at the, I believe it was the pit game, and he played the next, you know, one and a half games, you know, trying to play through the pain. And then finally they decided, you know, we got to put in the backup. And, and naturally the, the backup uh, was Zach Gibson because he had game experience having played at Akron, was a starter there. And, and you figure, well, he, he's the natural backup. And the freshman, you know, we'll put him on the scout team and help him, you know, develop what happens there. Well, uh, he didn't play well. He got to start the next game only played two series and they put the freshman in Zach Pyron. Uh, he made his way through the first half, not with that, without very much success. Second half, he finally started to get comfortable, played a lot better. The, the players rallied around him. They really like him a lot. And he got the start against Virginia tech. And, you know, he had one bad moment where he had that pick six, but he, he didn't let that get in the way of his focus, and he he led the team right before the half after they had that 90-yard uh, punt return go against them. He he led the team down the field in a you know one-minute drill to get a field goal, and then you know in the the final minutes of the fourth quarter he led them on a 75-yard drive, and he scored the the winning touchdown on that uh, on that nine-yard scramble. So. You know, even the, the veteran players on the team are, are really rallying around him after, you know, having played for Jeff Sims for so long. And as far as the status for Jeff Sims, uh, he was the emergency quarterback uh, the week before, and he was the emergency quarterback against Virginia Tech. And, of course, we're, we're not – we don't go to practice anymore, so we, we have to rely on what Coach Key says. And – Naturally, he's not going to give away the ranch when he's talking about, you know, who's playing a quarterback. All, all he did today was mention that Jeff returned to, to practice. So it's it's food for thought if you're the opponent, you know. But I, I doubt if, if Miami's going to play, you know, prepare for one quarterback or the other. You know, they're just they're going to prepare for what Chris Long does, uh, you know. And uh, I'm sorry, Chip Long at, at, as the coordinator. So. Uh, you know, I, I expect uh, Pyron to be out there as a starting quarterback. If he gets in trouble, it's nice to have somebody uh, like Jeff Sims waiting in the wings. And, of course, uh, does Georgia Tech think about, you know, saving Pyron's red shirt? He's played in two games. He plays in this game. It'll be game number three. Uh, you could uh, play him in this game and maybe – the game against North Carolina and then hold them out against Georgia and then all along giving, you know, giving Sims more time to heal, but knowing that he's there, if you need him. There are so many different, so, there are a lot of similarities with Miami. You're talking about the quarterback situation and, and as you're talking, I'm just kind of going through it with a Miami standpoint, Tyler Van Dyke's dealt with injuries recently. And again, uh, coach is only saying so much and actually said uh, on Monday uh, to start the week that they're not going to give away the game plan w with everything uh, for the other opponents. So they're going to keep that under wraps. And then similarly, you know, Jay Garcia from Miami gets in there. He was the next one up, do doesn't play well. And then they go to a true freshman in Jakari Brown who had been in there and they actually burned his red shirt last week. So he's now through there uh, again with the similarities with Brown and Pyron, you know, Brown was a number 17 quarterback in that 22 class, according to 24 seven sports composite Pyron was 24. So both four-star recruits, very similar uh, pass. It'll be interesting if Jakari gets his first career start uh, Georgia native. So we'll see if, if they do that or if they go back to Garcia, um, you know, it's hard to say about with, with Van Dyke. So it is interesting. Again, all this talk about quarterbacks rallying around it, trying to get the most out of it. He's talking, Talk more about Zach in terms of, you know, just his abilities, what he's kind of bringing to the table. And like you said, he did, you know, get into a better rhythm as the game went on there. But just w when he's going well or, or maybe the upside with him and um, if he does get the start, just kind of what's he bringing to the table, Rod? Yeah, he, he seems to be like a pretty intelligent quarterback. And Coach Key has talked about, you know, he'll come to the sidelines after a series and say, hey, I should have done this on this play. I'm not going to let that happen again. He, he's, he's always thinking ahead, you know, learning from his mistakes, moving on from the mistakes. 
uh, that interception he threw for the touchdown. He didn't let that affect him. Uh, came over, talked about it, put it behind him. And he, he's a tough kid. Uh, and he basically said the kid has ice water in his veins. So, uh, you know, you just get the sense of being around him that he has that, you know, that sort of it factor that that's hard to describe. And, and that's, that's what we're seeing from, from Zach Pyron. And he, you know, he, he recruited him all through, uh, high school. He's from Alabama. He's very familiar with them. And the kid, all he did was win three state championships at two different schools. So, uh, he, he has that ability to lead and make others around him better. Speaking of guys around him better, Nate McCollum, you know, number five, uh, tied for fifth in the ACC with 46 catches. Talk about him as a receiver and also the other weapons uh, that the quarterbacks can throw to that, that Georgia Tech has. Yeah, Nate, Nate's a, a real deceptive kid. You know, he's not very big, but every time that ball is near him, he catches it, it seems like. Yeah, there's been a few drops, but that's true of any receiver you talk about. But when he – they're trying to put him in situations where he can take advantage of his speed, uh, get him out on the perimeter where he can get those one-on-one situations. Uh, there was a couple of, of plays in that, that game against Virginia tech where he caught a pass on the perimeter, made a guy miss, uh, and then, you know, outran everybody down the sidelines. Another play where they third down and long, they th- threw a little screen behind the line of scrimmage. And it, it looked like he was trapped, two guys there. And he, he has such a quick burst of speed, he was able to run between the two defenders and, and get the first down. And he, he, he's, a, he's a pretty high-character kid, plays hard. Uh, they have uh, two players, one on offense and one on defense, wearing the number, number eight in honor of Demarius Thomas, uh, who up here is known as Bebe. And uh, he's, he's one of those two guys that wears the number eight and – and that's because he best exemplifies what, you know, Demarius was all about. The run game um, and and certainly, you know, the number eight is certainly special. Just and kind of talking about special numbers, you know, from a Miami standpoint, Xavier Restrepo wearing number seven um, in honor of Bryce Gowdy. And I know he's still on the roster there. So that'll be something um, from a Miami standpoint that they're certainly paying attention to and, and uh, the tragedy that happened with Bryce there. Uh, not knowing how to transition off of that, but just the running game, Rod, uh, what do you make of it? Again, middle of the pack and the, the conference, but they are coming off uh, over 200 yards in the game. What, what's your take on the running game and maybe the capabilities of what Georgia Tech can bring to the table there? Yeah, I, I think they, they have the running backs that are capable of, of doing well, picking up a lot of yards, but what, their success is going hand in hand with the development of the offensive line. And they started – four new faces on the offensive line to start the year. And only Jordan Williams uh, returned, you know, from previous years as a starter. Uh, and that's, that's been an issue over the last three years. Each year it's a different group of faces. So they finally have a, a group. They, against Virginia Tech, they started uh, three, let's see, one, two, three, four of the players were either true freshmen or redshirt freshmen. And then you had Jordan Williams. So it's taken a little while to develop that. And you know, that, as you know, the developing offensive lineman is probably a little slower than, you know, when you try to develop a skill player, that type of thing. So uh, they, they seem to start out games slow. Uh, you, you look at first half stats and boy, they really haven't run the ball that well, but in the second half, for whatever reason, they really pick up steam and they really turned it on against Virginia Tech in that second half, you know, with Dante Smith, Hassan Hall. And they, they finally gave uh, the true freshman, Jamie Felix, some reps in that first quarter of the game. And he's a kid that, you know, at one time was, I believe, was headed to Florida. Uh, and he uh, he's from Camden County in Georgia, South Georgia. And he's now... Uh, you know, when they made the coaching change there, he ended up coming to Georgia Tech. So I think he's a, another, you know, running back to keep an eye on because, you know, Hall's not coming back next year. Smith has the COVID year still available to him, but, you know, he could leave also. So they're, they're trying to get a little look at to see what perhaps he, he's going to be all about next year. 
a lot of discussion with Miami's offense, haven't scored a touchdown the last two games, really struggling regardless of who's in a quarterback. Uh, running the ball is what they want to do. They, they want to establish a ground game. Georgia Tech last in the AC in that, you know, Georgia Tech last in, a, you know, kind of towards the bottom in a lot of the defensive metrics there in the ACC. But just what is your take? Maybe the way the defense is playing kind of going into this one, the last few games, just your, your, your thoughts on the defense right now. Yeah, I think throughout the whole year, the linebackers have been the strength of the defense and you have, uh, uh, Charlie Thomas and uh, A.C. Ely, the transfer from Maryland, are, are that's one of the be- better duos in the league, and they've uh, you know they've really played well. But now they're starting to get some uh, some better play from the defensive tackles. Daquan Dows from Savannah, Georgia, and uh, Makia Scott, the other fellow that wears number eight. Uh, Keon White is healthy for the first time. He missed just about the entire last season. He has, I think, about eight tackles for a loss, four and a half sacks. He's the guy to watch, you know, as far as the pass rush is concerned. So when you when you get start to get more pressure like they are up front and, and you have those linebackers, you know, running from sideline to sideline as your playmakers, it, it also makes it easier for the secondary to start making plays. And you, you have a true freshman back there in Clayton Powell Lee who uh, last week, had an interception and a fumble uh, recovery, and uh, he's he's up there in the top three since he's taken over the safety spot in tackles every game. So uh, they're they're starting to develop some players, uh, you know, on the defense now that they're letting guys stay out there for extended periods, of, you know, of time. Yeah, great great insight, Rod. I, I always enjoy talking to you. Um, we'll see how the game goes, but I'll let you get back to it. Okay, thanks. Thanks for having me on, and uh, hopefully we'll see you up here.